top three. We're so glad that you've tuned in. We have a really fun show for you today. And look who's back. I know. We've got uh, Jordan Wagner is back, or Jay Swag. That's what you call we him. We call him Jay Swagger. J well, Jay know, Swagger. You know, while uh, in between last show and this show, I went shopping with Rich, so that's kind of why we matched yeah, today. Yeah, I we know. Kinda, we we didn't get the, the same, memo. Although we even had the same boots yeah. together. Well, we've had his cousin cool. on the show. Now we're going to have his twin on the show. <laughs> come on, so, somebody. I know, and he, I even, even heard him do, I've even heard you do his come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. See, come on, somebody. I knew it. <laughs> We have Rowena, Rowena Rodriguez on the show today. Um, she's amazing. She's been on, on JCTV before. She's going to talk about something that's very controversial. It's something that you're either doing right now or you're thinking about doing that you've been told not to do. It may or may not be so. That's right? true. Right. It's, it's very controversial, and we're going we're gonna to hash it out, guys versus girls. So stay with us. You either feel it or won't. The truth is hard to Hey, welcome to the Yes or No segment. I am Rich Wilkerson Jr. here with my man Jay Swag in the house. And we have an amazing guest on the show today. So excited about our guest. Her name is Rowena Rodriguez, which I love that name. Just say that one time, Jay Swag. Like, wow. Rowena Rodriguez. Rowena Rodriguez. You have to say it like with the accent, you know? What is Rowena that accent you're Rodriguez. doing? Wow. I don't know. Yeah, is that, he's, he's got Italian? his down pat. Is that kind of what Italian? What is the accent there? It's Latin. 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 Spice. Rodriguez. Ooh. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like That's that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Now do that tonga. Okay. So anyways, here we go. Now, Jordan, I want you to start this thing off, and I want you to breathe. Rowena, you're going to be just fine. Here we go okay. in five, four, three, two. This is yes or no. Go. Do you like to travel? Yes. Um. Do you like fashion? Yes. Do you like to design fashion? Yes. Are bell-bottom jeans in? No. Oh, okay. Have you ever had an accident while designing fashion? Yes. Does your, do you get a lot of phone calls from guys? No. How about text messages? No. How about IM chats? No. How about Facebook messages? One at a time, sorry. No. Sorry. Uh, do you like to go on dates? No. Um, have you dated a guy in the past eight years? No. My goodness. Oh, I, I don't know if we can go on from here. I don't know what else to Would say. Would you like to get married? <laughs> yes. Do you like talking about relationships? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Jordan. I don't know. I'm speechless, man. I mean, I, I, after that question, do you like to go to the movies? Yes. Okay, that I'm, was a great question. I'm trying to think of yeah, date ideas. That, these are great questions. No, you know? Listen, you, 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 got, you got some people out there wondering. You haven't dated anyone in eight years. We're confused. Rowena Rodriguez. I mean, that's a name that we just, we got to find out more about this whole thing. So don't go anywhere because there's a lot more coming right here on top three. We're going to find out the rest of her story. Will you tell us the rest? Absolutely. She will. So don't go anywhere. We've got one coming. Hustle and take you to the cleanest like a laundry bag. And the only thing that's stopping me now from making sloppy. This is Larissa here with Reba, and we're here with Rowena Rodriguez. And uh, the guy guys had a little fun with her on the yes or no, and, and I think, uh, if anything, you, you stumped the guys a little a few, a few times. Uh, but Rowena is a fashion evangelist, designer evangelist, I like to say, and she's the founder of Plain Jane Project. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Okay, the guys were kind of touching upon some things, and something about you got injured. You used to work for these fashion companies. You yes. got injured designing clothes? I, yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it actually didn't happen on, on the work premises. It actually happened at home. I was, I took a seam ripper and I was trying to undo a seam and it stabbed, <gasps> I stabbed myself right oh. in the center of the palm. So I drove myself to the emergency room, had to get a technic shot, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you went from being this high end fashion designer. Mm -hmm. what, what was that like? Um, you know, I, I love it. It was very fast paced. So awesome. You know, the devil wears Prada kind of, mm -hmm. you know, fast pace. Um, you were always really fashionable growing up. Always. Yeah, I mean, you always had to bring your heels with your flip flops underneath the, underneath the <laughs> desk. You know what I mean? And then when you rush to the meeting, you like put on the heels and you rush off with, you know, all your work and everything. You're fully accessorized head to toe, hair, makeup, everything is done. So what was life like for you in these jobs? Was it was it all good? Was there was there bad points? What was it, like? You know, it just the, the the deadlines are so tight, so fast, so heavy. You know, and you know when you when you start off in the in industry, you mm -hmm. you really want to succeed. So you you put in the late late hours. You put Is in it like Project the One Way or it's in, it's intense. Uh -huh. It's intense. There are challenges and personalities that you're dealing with, very similar to Project Runway. <laughs> you know, and um, some of it, you know, you're like, how are we supposed to fit this into this? You know, in this in this time frame. And so try. try Literally, you're trying to put a rabbit 
pull a rabbit out of a hat a lot of the time. And so when you've been doing it for a long period of time, you get to a point like either this is what you live, you're, bre you're living, you're breathing, and this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And then I, I, I reached a point where I wanted to be the senior designer. I wanted, and I got to that point, and I was like, I should be the happiest person on the planet. And it, it, I, I, I hit a ceiling. And that's when I was like, "Why? How come I've achieved all of these things, and um, I'm not fulfilled?" Right. And that's when I really just started seeking the Lord. Wow. So, what was the point that you did find the Lord through your search? You know, I was working at Forever Twenty One at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're very strong Christians. You know, and so that wasn't you know coincidence. A lot of, okay, wait. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> no, right. Yeah. But if you look did on the, them, the bag, no, no, no. If you look on the, underneath the bag, it says John three sixteen. Mm -hmm. Right. But on most, the bag. But only if you're a believer. But most other people think it's a Pantone color for the yellow. <laughs> oh, like it's the code for the, the yellow. Code. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that either. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're an um, if you know, if you're a you non-believer, right. you're like, oh, there's some guy no named big... John put the Pantone color on exactly. there. Exactly, he created the yellow. I mean, you know, and com in, in combination with the black logo, it's it, they won't know it unless you actually have read the Bible mm -hmm. or have heard about it or, you know, went to yeah. Sunday school for a day, yeah. you know, and so. And so, so you yeah. work while you were working there. It was during that time, it, I really reached that point where I was like, I'm really searching for you. It already started, I was secretly, I was undercover, like reading my Bible. None of my friends knew, nobody uh -huh. at work knew, you know, and, um, and covertly, I, you know, the Lord just like put some, a, a couple of really strong, solid Christians in my life, mm -hmm. you know, in the industry. And they just started wanting to hang out with me and pray for me and I didn't understand why they wanted to hang out with me. I was a bad influence. Mm -hmm. I cussed, I went, you know, I went clubbing, you know, I was always trying to go out, go out and look, looking for guys, you know, and I was like, you, you can't hang out with me. Like I'm, I'm a bad influence on you. Mm -hmm. And they just kept loving me and loving me and loving me, you know, and in short, those women, those two girls, you know, they're just a part of my testimony, wow. you know, my career, you yeah. know, I met them in the marketplace. Yeah. And then what led you to leaving the design world? Wow, yeah, I mean, it got to a point where it's like you put in your 60 hours a week, you know, you, 60 hours a week, you're traveling, you're, um, you know. Sounds like the life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots you, of work. You're traveling, you're, you're traveling a lot, you know, and um, the opportunities are there. It's a fast pace and you're, um, at, you know, lab dips and there's, it sounds so cool, it, and it is, but when you're actually in it, it's it's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, after after three deadlines that I hit when I was working at R&B, um, uh, you know, I, I had to drive myself to the emergency room. I'd gotten sick, you know, and one day I, I woke up and it looked like someone had punched me in the eye. You know, I, you know, it's just all these different things were happening in my body because mm -hmm. your body cannot s sustain itself for that long, uh, just such a long period of, of, mm. of stress, right. mm -hmm. you know, and so, so, but I'd already received the Lord, uh, you know, into, into my life and, and um, I started wanting to spend more time, you know, going to Tuesday night young adult group and have a Bible study. You wanted a life. I wanted, wanted to have a social life, which it, I was like, how do I fit it in? Like I should be going to the bars. I should be going to the clubs. And, and all of a sudden I couldn't even do that, you mm -hmm. know? And then now, I love this part of your story because we had you on Brandon's show when yeah, I was filling in for him on, that. on so off fun. the record. I don't know if you saw it, Larissa, but so you walk into this, um, young adult group, <laughs> you're a Christian, you've accepted the Lord. Your, your life is just, is turning around. And this ties into the 31 flavors that Rich was talking okay. about. Okay. Tell us the 31 flavor story. Okay, so it's a Tuesday night young adult group. Uh -huh. And I was so excited. You know, I was still working in the fashion industry at the time, but I showed up on a Tuesday night. I made sure to get there on time because it's the place where you want to be. If you're a single girl and you're a Christian, you want to be at this Tuesday night place. Okay. And I was a new Christian, so I was like, oh my gosh, I've never dated a Christian guy before. I'm sitting there, third row to the front, spiritual splash zone, and I'm like, I'm going to try all the 31 flavors of Christian boys. <laughs> and I was so so excited. I got there, you know, the worship was cool. Even the worship leader was really cool. He had, you know, the flip. Okay, so and yeah, everybody falls in love with the worship leader. And, uh, 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 and I didn't know that. I mean, when I first showed up at church, you know, I grew up Catholic, so I showed up at church and the worship leader's wearing flip-flops. I thought he was going to go to hell. I was like, he's going to hell. You know, and so when I showed up at Tuesday night, I was like, Lord Jesus, you're so awesome. I'm going to be married by this time next year. You know, and so I wanted to try every single kind of Christian guy there was to try. And I figured if there's like a bunch of different, you know, non-believing guys, a lot, lot, lot of different heathen guys, there's got to be a lot of, you know, a variety of Christian men, <laughs> which I wanted to try, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And so I'm sitting there and, um, and I'm pondering on this and I hear the Spirit of the Lord tell me, no dating. And I looked at my best friend and I was like, no, that, 
to, that, that wasn't, that was weird. And then I heard the voice again, no dating. And I was so disappointed. I was like, oh, really, God? And after, you know, the sermon was amazing. Afterwards, um, my best friend was there. My girlfriend, Erin, was there. And we were praying. And, and I confessed what I'd heard. And I said, I don't know what this means. Like, what does that mean? But then I realized it was the only thing that I, I'll give my life to you, Lord. You can have my career. You can have everything. But you can't have that. I want a date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't buy the car unless you test drive it, right? That's, that's that was where I was coming right, from, right. though. Hence, you wanted you know? to try all the different yeah. flavors. Yeah, that's that's you know, when you get saved, you know, you're still one foot in, one foot out. You know, mm -hmm. you, you're trying to you're trying to work it in, and it was the one area that was so important to me that I was not willing to relinquish, and that's mm -hmm. what that's exactly what he required of me. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, how long has it been since you've had a date? <laughs> since since I, the, since the last show, it's. Um, Eight years. Eight years. Eight. Eight years. I, I gave him, I tried it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I tried it for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I tried it for two weeks and had had a couple of guys on, you know, on pause, on hold, and called and was like, you know what, I'm not into this. And I was like, God, I'm going to give you a couple weeks. I'm well, not going to date for two weeks. <laughs> this is what I love then, okay? Because obviously she's beautiful. And so it's not like you can't get some, you can't get a date, or there's not someone out there that would call you and yeah. take you out, or you know that that you if you didn't want to get married. It's usually not a problem. It's, but it's that's, flipped now. And that's, what, eight that's years, what I so. love because a lot of you know it, the way God works. It's like for you to be saying that everybody's like, wow. Well, if she's if someone this beautiful and this successful could make a choice like this to follow God in this drastic or this much of a sacrificial way. You know what could we do? You know. Yeah. Well, and and that kind of leads to that question. It's like, was it difficult? I mean, you probably did have people asking you, and and why did you stay with that? Actually, pledge? I mean, the, when when God requires something of you, mm -hmm. He definitely gives you the grace and the anointing to be able to endure mm -hmm. the trial and the temptations. Because trust me, there were temptations. Right. You know, I'm like, I didn't really hear, I didn't really hear God. You know, I was trying to talk myself out of it, but I knew that I knew that that's what He required of me, and I wanted to be faithful. But what happened, and what I, it took me the first two years to realize this, was I was like, tears have gone by and I have not had a single guy ask me out. Yeah. And that was weird, you know? I mean, you're, usually you're trying to, you're like, okay, I'm not really interested, thank you, that's very flattering. You know, you've got all these different ways to say thank you, but no thank you. You had your and, fake phone oh. number ready for two years and nobody asked you for it? <laughs> nobody asked <laughs> for it. You know, and I was like, what is that God? You know, and, um, and I really felt like just because the Lord knew that I, I, I needed that time, he just hid me. Mm -hmm. I was just hidden in him and so that I wouldn't even have to, you know, um, say no thank you. I wouldn't even have to refuse or reject or have to explain because I didn't, I wouldn't have known how. Right. You know, and then when I finally had the words to be able to explain that, I got the first guy that asked me out and I finally just told him in his face, I was like, no, I can't have breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, donuts, popcorn. I can't do, I can't even do a hot dog. Like he right. was like, breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, you know, I was like, I can't do any of that. The Lord says no dating. Yeah. Now tell us out of all of this, mm -hmm what has come out of it because it's pretty incredible it's really cool it's really cool i mean it's been it's been, you know it's an 8 year process you know and so i knew i was like god surely you're going to do something with this season like this husband's going to be he's got to be amazing cuz yeah you you, just, you expressed an interest to be married yes, so yes absolutely mm -hmm. and you know and it's like god you got to take this desire away from me if that's not what you have for me you've got to take this desire away 8 years later if that desire is still there it's very real mm -hmm. you know it ha it comes up all the time you know especially when you're in a sea of like married girlfriends you know, and they're on their like their second child, you know, and so, but so what the Lord has birthed out of this is like what, what he was teaching me, what he was, he was teaching me holiness and I didn't understand really what that was. I didn't even know the word holiness. And so I started really digging in, digging into the word, you know, and so now we have Plain Jane Project. Mm -hmm. I started off as Plain Jane Project, just like fun little events for women and girls. And, and the Lord was like, no, 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 you need to have an event for purity. I want mm -hmm. you to talk about your, give them your testimony and how you did that. It's possible. Right. So now it's not even just you it's not just about you and your hu husband mm -hmm. future right. Hopefully, but it's become about so many, so many other people, and so much more than that. Yeah, you know, I, I volunteer with youth, um, and I've been, you know, working seven years with um, junior high school kids, and, and especially girls. And um, a lot of the issues um, about your purity, it's it's already, it's already happening at the age of 12, 13, mm -hmm. maybe even younger. 
-hmm. you know. Um, and because I have that, you know, VIP, fa I'm a fashion designer VIP card, I get like kind of like a backstage pass into their lives because they know I'm not that, I'm not that, you know, um, what, what they've seen what a normal Sunday school teacher might look right. like. So they'll pull me inside and say, hey, you know, I'm kind of struggling with these thoughts. What do I do? You know, and I'm like, they this, think you're cool. I'm like, I've got, you know, and this, hot. they're this. like, she's kind of hot, but she's really holy. What yeah. are you talking about? What? Hot and holy. What, what, what do we do with that? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a clothing line. Um, but like, you know, it's like they don't know what to do. It messes them up enough for me to be able to mm, yeah. sow some seed yeah. in there. Well, yeah. I know we're, gosh, time is really flying by. As we kind of wrap this up, what do you hope, you know, young girls or even guys out there will learn from this? And, and do you think this is for everybody? Um, I do. I thought it was just going to be for women, you know, and, and the Lord recently just this year was like, you know, I want you to take this to the men too. So like, you know, in April we're hosting um, Save the Date, the Courtship versus Dating Summit. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're taking this to the the Christian singles. You know, and these are this is a very uh, this is a mature audience, and we're going to talk about you know um, what does dating look like. You know, I'd like to know what I've never dated a Christian man. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that look like? You know, what does um, courtship look like? I mean, it's so foreign. Like, do we even court anymore in mm -hmm. modern times? You know, and for me, I'd like to answer the question: What is the difference between? Christian dating and secular dating. Because from my point of view and from the, a lot of the conversations and relationships that I've seen you know, happen, there's not much difference, except for the fact that they go to church on Sunday and, and a Bible study during the week. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I'd like to get that conversation mm -hmm. sparked and, um, and just engaged so that it's not such like that pink elephant in the church. And these are conversations about that. that you're having all the time on your Facebook page. If you could, I know that there are a lot of people who have very strong opinions on dating versus courtship. Right. And so find her on Facebook. We'll, we'll link through our JCTV yeah. Facebook and you guys can leave comments for Owena yeah. and let her know what you yeah. think personally yeah. uh, if you can't make it to the Save the Date project. Well, we really thank you for stopping by and uh, we're gonna be giving them your website and she already did as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know that you have um, a call on your life and, and I like the fact that you haven't solved all the issues and that you're exploring, but through your own journey, you have learned something and hopefully that other people will be inspired by that. Well, we have a lot more to discuss, I'm sure, with the guys. When we come back, a lot more music. Check this out from The Rep. Hey, welcome back to Top 3's Top 3. Today we've been chatting with Rowena Rodriguez, and it's been an amazing, amazing show. We've kind of chatted a little bit about her life and what she's been going through. And Jordan and I, you know, we were hitting the hard questions during the yes or no, and he asked the question, have you dated in the past eight years? And she said no. We thought that was kind of interesting, but as you guys began to talk to her, we discovered some of the answers to all of this. But you guys kind of got into something. I'm hoping you can kind of clarify. I think, Reba, you might have some clarification and some definition of the terms. Talk about dating and courting. What do these words even mean? Can you help us out a little bit? Okay, and a lot of this is something that she's opening up for discussion on her Facebook and on her sites, and sure. it's definitely in her seminars. But it's the difference between people that are just going out for companionship that may or may not lead to something. Yeah. Whereas courtship, I actually, I like, I really like the way you said it, Jordan. Whereas courtship is more something that leads towards marriage or okay. it's more about marriage. But both, it's it's very difficult to, to say that there's one definition for either one. Okay. Because they're kind so of it's, open it's to kind interpretation. it's kind of like intentional dating as opposed to just going out just to have fun and, you know, be with people. It's I like, like dating with the intention of maybe getting, you know, to this marry This one is somebody. a potential mate, possibly. Okay. Potential mate. You know, I, I think the biggest thing when it comes to dating, in, in my mind, is the Bible talks about in Corinthians, I'm saying to not be unequally yoked. And I think there's a lot of people that are watching right now, and I think the very first thing that we should always hit up right at the bat is when you talk about dating, courting, whatever it is, is that the person that you choose, I've always said, the person that you get married to is either gonna be your greatest asset or your greatest liability. Can someone say amen? Amen. <laughs> and so, and so <laughs> it's really the person that you're choosing. I think it's the second greatest decision that you ever make aside from your personal relationship with the okay, Lord. Okay, it was your second greatest decision that you ever sure. made. But let's be honest, most people don't decide who they're gonna date. They just date whoever's available. Totally. Most you, most people run kind of on automatic automatic pilot. Well, that's the problem. And they just end up with people. They yeah, yeah. end up coupled. Just kind of happens. In I just kind of right. And they didn't fell into love. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fall into. I ain't falling in nothing, yeah. huh? <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's just big that you, you understand. You know, I'm saying that the very first thing that I think in choosing a potential mate as a Christian is finding someone that you're equally yeah. yoked with. And number one, I think equally yoked refers to I me. Mean, a yoke is something that you put on two ox in terms of having the same amount of strength so they can plow a field in a straight mm -hmm. line. You would never put a yoke on, on, on a reindeer and an ox because they would go they would do circles. Oh, that's but, good. But people have a tendency to go, okay, I'm gonna pick that person and they think the only criteria is being a Christian. But how many of y'all know 
there's some crazy Christians out there. And so, that's right. So Come I on. think the whole being equally yoked yeah. thing is not mm-hmm. just being a believer. That's the first, that, that's a given. You know what I mean? I, hopefully you know that, right. that if you're a believer, right. you want to be with another believer. But then secondly, it's capacity. It's emotional capacity. It's family. I mean, you don't just marry a person. Yeah. I like what you family. said about the strength thing. That's yeah. pretty amazing because um, a lot of people think that I'm a strong person. And a lot of people say that's a like bad word in the dating world. Yeah. Like, oh, she's real. Be careful. She's really strong willed. Yeah. But if you're, a sh- if you want, like you said, you want to be equally yoked with someone that has the same type of ambition or strength sure. as you. Mm-hmm. A lot of times right. I see people that are like, oh, I want to rescue her. She's weak. She's right. frail. Yeah. She's fragile. But that is like yeah. them putting a yoke yeah. on themselves strong in someone who's and weak. not. And if you did that, and, and the whole point of a yoke was to plow a field in a straight line, right. is that you're going to tend to do yeah. these zigzags wow. and circles. That's and so, so good. A lot of relationships look that right. way, right? They just kind of do circles and they never get anywhere in the relationship. Right. They end up coming coming full circle and going, man, I don't like yeah. you. And that was, yeah. that was dumb. Or Reba's you know? book, The Rating Game, oh like, talks about how people tend to think they want somebody that's out of their league, or they, sure. or they don't think as highly of themselves. I'm sorry, you, yeah. it's your book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it. I love when people talk about my book. Oh, sure. all the time. But yeah, it's, it's basically just looking at yourself as more than one quality. So a lot of times people think, oh, well, I'm good looking, he's good looking, this is gonna work. And it's like, well, you're also a lot of other things besides sure. just your looks. Yeah, totally. Right. Or I'm a Christian, he's a Christian, this is gonna work. Oh, well, you're also a lot more, more things yeah. besides just your faith. There's a lot of personality, there's a lot of lifestyle choices yeah, totally. that go into that. So, I mean, as a single guy, and I'm sure there's a lot of other single people out there that are watching this right now, what is what is something that I should be looking for in a girl, in a, a woman? A big diamond ring to give her. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody. You know, how do we, how do we so know kidding. if we're equal, equally yoked on the first date? You know, like, how do you find yeah. that out? I think I, mean, I think that so much of it, you know what I mean? I think that, like, I, I think the idea of, like, oh, he goes to the same church as me, so he's a Christian. I think that you, you got to ask people questions, and, you, you know, I think your whole God story, your whole connection with Jesus, mm-hmm. I mean, that should be your first priority. That should easily come out of somebody. If, if people are, have reservations for given answers and stuff, yeah. th- those are all big signs. I think people right. should be open about their faith that you're talking to, and I think they should be able to ask and answer your questions. And I think so many people don't do nearly enough investigation before they say, I do. And I think what we have to do as Christians, as believers, is we have to put off temptation, we have to flee temptation, but we have to run to Jesus. We have to run to the cross. We have to not only run from the temptation, but run yeah. to something. And I love what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And that's so vital that you understand that. The things that you're dealing with right now in your relationships, that yeah. people before you have dealt with them. And your pastor is, people have dealt with these things. In fact, Jesus dealt with these things. It says, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So whatever you're being tempted with, you can bear it. You can resist it. You can run to Jesus. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. I think that you got to catch something that's so important, especially those that are dating, those that are in that process right now, is that I think sometimes in churches we can get so narrow-minded in what we preach, and we say, you got to be a virgin, you got to be a virgin, but, but God never called you to virginity. God called us to purity, which is a total... He called us to be pure. He called us to another level. He called us to be above reproach. So I think being a virgin is an offshoot of being pure. You know what I'm saying? And so he, he's called you to another level. He's called you to raise your thinking and, and raise your capacity and raise your actions. And so we serve a God who has a good plan for us, who's got the perfect person I believe in mind for you, but you gotta follow his plan. You gotta play by his rules. His rules aren't there to give you a small life. His rules are there to give you a big life, a great life, and to protect you. And so I just really believe today that if you're watching this show, man, you got to begin right now to sow seed into good things and believe for good things. And you've got to start setting up standards and boundaries right now. Don't let temptation overtake you, but rather put the boundaries up, flee temptation, run to Jesus. He's called you to purity. He's called you to be pure. Purity is not just a season of life. Purity is when I'm married. Purity is who we are. And so that's what he's called you to. And today, that's what I want to pray for. I want to pray for people that are watching right now that you would walk out purity, that you would be the man of God, you'd be the woman of God that he's called you to. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much today, Lord, for your word, God. We thank you for what you're you're doing, Lord, um, in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, God, that we have, that we can access your throne room, Lord, and you can speak to us. And God, I just pray right now for those that are watching, Lord, for married people, for single people, Lord, for young adults, for teenagers. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would make us pure, Jesus. Lord, to the pure, all things are pure, God. I, I don't care what's happened in the past, Lord. We know that your blood cleanses and your blood washes us. And today, Jesus, Lord, we want to begin to think on things that are pure, Lord. We want to begin to focus 
on purity, God. We don't just want just to have actions to be good, Lord. We want a heart change, Lord. We want to change and transform the heart, the inside, Lord. And I pray right now for those that are watching, God, as they put you first, Lord, as they lean on you, God, I pray, Lord, that you would begin to make their paths straight like your word tells us, Lord, that you would have good things in store for us. Lord, we believe that the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by God. And today, Lord, we believe as we put you first, Lord, you will lead us and you will direct us. God, we put our trust in you. Lord, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We really want to thank Rowena, for, Rowena, I should correct myself, Come Rowena on. Rodriguez for being here. And check out her website, Plain Jane Project. Check out all the different events that she's having to continue this discussion, dating, courtship, purity. It's all good. And of course, the rep has been here all the last couple weeks. Check out his website. And of course, here at JCTV, check out our website, jctv.org, Facebook, Twitter. All of us want to wish you a good evening or good morning, depending on where you are. <laughs> Stick around. For more JCTV. Let me count the odds.